And what's up, everybody? Welcome to Digging Deep, an Ortiz Squared podcast with former Major League All-Star Russ Ortiz and columnist Jesus Ortiz. Today, I'm going to be co-hosting instead of Jesus. I'm Manny Gomez. I host the Bodega Baseball podcast and am a contributor, contributor excuse me, at rsquina.com. Um, we'll take you behind the scenes with athletes and journalists to learn how they approach their jobs and what obstacles they've overcome on their journey. Today, we have two Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalists, Julio Cortez and Marcio Jose Sanchez. Welcome aboard, guys. How are you doing? Good morning. Doing good. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Russ? Yeah, guys, man, this is exciting uh, to have you two on and uh, be able to not only get, allow us to get to know who you are better. Um, I know uh, Jesus um, knows you all better. Uh, than I do, or maybe maybe our audience does, but uh, yeah. So thanks, thanks for coming on. And you know, one of the biggest things that that uh, we've been able to do here with this podcast is to ask all of our special guests, you know, what what twenty twenty was like for for everybody, them and their families. Um, and the the thing that you know that hit me is that you know you all did things a little bit differently than than probably most of us for 2020. So your experiences were uh, probably a lot different than than ours. And so so if you two can can just briefly, you know, just share kind of, you know, how how it was for you and your family and and how you all, you know, made it through and then, you know, would like to get into uh, really the, the nuts and bolts of of your work. Sure, I'll go first. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> being a photojournalist is it's crazy because uh, you can't take pictures from inside your house. And so while, you know, 2020 it was a year where we all hunkered down and uh, and just kind of stayed put, uh, our cameras kept, uh, you know, being out there recording history, recording what was going on in that crazy year of 2020. Uh, right. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the times we just thought, uh, you know, it's crazy, but we're out here and it's cool. For me, it's, uh, it's, it's actually um, super different on both fronts from my home end because my oh, my wife and kids, primarily my wife, were you know had a very tough time dealing with the fact that I was out on the streets every day in the middle of a raging pandemic, you know. So it was very worrisome for my family, you know, as far as like uh, the exposure that I had to you know, the illness that was getting so many people sick. And then on the professional front, um, it was, was one of the most historic times of the most historic year of my life as far as like witnessing how U.S. culture and society was changing day by day in a period of 12 months based on two incidents, the, 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 the emergence of COVID and the death of George Floyd. Right. And, and, you know, what, what you two and your colleagues do obviously is important uh, work to this, you know, to this country for us, you know, um, to stay informed, to, to know what's going on. And so we appreciate, you know, you going out and, and, and doing your job and doing it well. And, and a testament to how well you did your job. Uh, you two were part of the, the team from the Associated Press that won uh, 2021 Pulitzer Prize for, for breaking news photography. So congratulations on that. That's pretty awesome. Um, I mean, what an achievement. And so how, how has winning, um, uh, being a part of the winning team, you know, uh, of winning the Pulitzer Prize changed your lives, you know, maybe in a, in a, in a, in a good way. And then maybe what, what's something that is, you know, that's kind of been a, uh, maybe a, I don't want to say a burden, but uh, or negative, but uh, maybe that's just that's just change that you're having to get used to. Let's start with uh, Marcio. You want to answer first? Uh, you know, the the fact of the matter is that you know you don't realize the impact that something like a full surprise wins has on your career until you get it. You know, <laughs> so it's been on, on 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 three you know three different spaces where I've had. To celebrate this win from it comes from a first the country i'm from honduras you know that country is elated about being the first hondureño to win the pulitzer prize 
And then, uh, then in the community of Limwood in South LA, where I went to great, uh, middle and high school, they are celebrating the moment with me as well. Um, and, and obviously the university <laughs> where I attended San Jose State. So those three places are, you know, it was, it's, it's awesome that they are celebrating this with me and they're just happy as I am uh, with this uh, recognition. That's awesome. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. For, yeah. For me, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a culmination of, of all those dreams uh, that you had uh, coming up as a young photographer, uh, thinking, you know, kind of like growing up playing baseball in the backyard saying, you know, bottom of the nine, two outs, World Series, here we go, right? Uh, you, you don't really think you're, you're ever going to make it to that point. But that's really what, you know, I can uh, compare this all of this to is winning the World Series, getting, you know, that winning hit. Uh, and, and not only that, but taking a, a big team win because uh, this group of uh, photographers, there's 10 of us. Who are all very talented, uh, and everybody comes from uh, different backgrounds and, and different situations. So it's really cool, uh, and and to be able to share this with Marcio and, and and some of the other people on there is just really cool uh, because we have worked so hard to get to this spot. Yeah, and you mentioned you know different backgrounds, and and so uh, Julio, how? How did you get into photo photojournalism? But you know, let, let everybody know, like you know, where where you're from and how you got into photojournalism because uh, it's you know it's a it's a really cool story for both of you. Have some really cool stories, you know, and how you got involved in photojournalism. And so, uh, how did you get started? And and what you know was it a passion, original passion of yours, or when did it become a passion for you? So for me, it started really uh, young. I was 12 years old, uh, just two years after arriving in the U.S. Uh, yeah, I, I was uh, born in Mexico, uh, in Tepec, in Mexico, and, and I know that my family in, in Mexico is looking, is, is seeing uh, this live right now in, in, in Mexico. Un saludo a mi familia a Tepec, y a todos gracias por por ver este capítulo. But um, but yeah, uh, it. I started at the school newspaper, my middle school newspaper, and, and I, I wrote a pretty quick, short story on our local park and rec, uh, um, you know, leagues that we had in our, in our neighborhood in, in, in uh, San Fernando Valley. Uh, and I got the itch. I wanted to be a, a journalist from that moment. Uh, you know, my, my dream was to be, uh, you know, a Los Angeles Dodgers baseball player. I wanted to play uh, on the field. <laughs> And, and when I realized, well, you know, that might not happen. So I'm going to go ahead and, and find a way to get on the field. So sports writing was my way. I was actually, my goal was to be doing what exactly what uh, Jesus does on a daily basis, be a, a, a beat writer covering baseball. Uh, so, uh, but at one point, uh, September 11 happened uh, and I was in college and I started seeing the images that came out of there. And that really influenced me into turning over into photography, and and from then on, um, you know, it was uh, my goal was to to make it in this field. Yeah. So you said you uh, you wrote, or you you did work with the um, in the San Fernando Valley because that's where I'm from. That's where I grew up in San Fernando Valley in Van Nuys, <laughs> and so yeah. No, I um, I. I started at the uh, uh, Madison Middle School Journal in uh, in North Hollywood. Uh, okay. That was my first paper, and then I went to Grant High School. Uh, and and oh. right after Grant High School, I uh, I started uh, freelancing with the LA Daily News and the LA Times, writing like five inch stories on high, high school sports. So that's really kind of where it started all. What years was was uh, was that? Um, I graduated uh, from Grant in '97. Okay. Um, and and so and then I spent uh, because of my legal status I was undocumented for many years 13 years in total uh, it took for me to get my my residency so I, I was stuck at the junior college level for for quite a bit you know wh where my friends were all graduating in two years I was I actually stayed at the junior college for seven years because I couldn't go anywhere else uh, CSUN uh, where I eventually graduated from would take me but they would have taken me at out of state tuition prices, which would have been, uh, you know, the cost of going to USC. And I didn't think financially right. that was that was smart. 
Gotcha. What about you, Marcel? Where where did you get your start, and and how how did you get involved in photojournalism? Well, Russ, my love my love for the news starts at a super uh, early age. Uh, recently, with the Pulitzer Prize win, my cousin shares a memory of me in the back patio of my house in Honduras, reading the newspaper cover to cover at age seven or eight years old. <laughs> so you know the uh, the consumption of the news to me. Um, that love started at a super uh, um, early age. And so when I reminisce back at that moment that my, that my cousin witnessed, you know, what I was doing is consuming every aspect of it, the, pho the photographs, the, the articles, and the way that the, 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 the stories were designed, you know, as a, at, at a young age. Later in life, I flirted with the idea of becoming something else like everybody else does. Like I said, hey, I want to be a fighter pilot. For a while, you know, I, I, I had that dream. But then, you know, I discovered in high school photography by taking a class and uh, photojournalism by being asked to write a story, uh, write a, a, uh, a, a report about a career. So as a, senior, as a senior in high school, I discovered the career of photojournalism. And that's when I chose my path and never looked back. Yeah, that's a, I have a, a good friend, uh, Matt York, who was also a photographer for the AP and, um, and so I know, you know, just was discussing with him, a lot of what you all do um, is about anticipating no, no one, you know, what's going on, but then anticipating, you know, of maybe something that may happen, being able to be quick to, to see things that maybe we don't see. And that's the thing that I am very impressed with, with, with you all, when you do such, you do such a great job that your instincts and, and, you know, how that, like, where do those instincts come from? Do you think? Yeah, for uh, me, I, I, for I, me I, go ahead. Go ahead, Marcio. For me, it comes from experience, you know, from experience, uh, uh, from failing one too many at times, you know, because, uh, you know, the, in the beginning, the technology was slow, you know, right. and then as the technology evolved, we just had less and less excuses, to be honest with you, you know, because the technology just got better and better and better. And then we come to the moment last year where, uh, where uh, you know, we uh, we um, were presented with a set of historic, you know, uh, a, a historic precedent to cover these mass protests that were going on, you know, in all over the U.S. Sometimes in the middle of the night, you know. And I think that's when we exercise like all our lifelong experience of having way, way too many misses, you know, honestly. And then just putting all that together and making sure that you didn't make the same mistake again and to yeah. concentrate on getting the, the right, the right photo, the right moment. How about you, Hulo? Uh, I always kind of go back to the sports, uh, especially playing baseball. You know, you kind of, you're always thinking uh, two steps ahead. Uh, you know, if the ball comes to me, uh, what am I going to do? Uh, and really photography is a lot the same way. Uh, uh, mostly because you study the situations uh you know i always tell people that uh photography it, it just kind of repeats itself uh, a lot of these images have been shot one way or another um you know in the past like you have unless you you have a a, a photograph that you're taking in like of boots on the ground in mars like no other picture has never been made before so uh so that, i really see that i mean uh you know Protests, uh, they, they they all kind of look the same when you step back and look at at the you know overall coverage of it. Uh, it's just how you can position yourself to get that uh, image that that looks like one that that should uh, stand out. Yeah, I apologize really quick because I had I had a couple of slideshows that we wanted to play of your images and. Uh, oh. The file is too large for this for the service that we're using, so I I couldn't uh, post them up because I do have a question in regards to some of the images that you guys have, um, some from from BLM protests. Um, I'm guessing after the George Floyd, the aftermath after George Floyd, um, the way that these protests were were perceived in a lot of ways in the media uh, was that they that they might have been violent. I, I don't know if that's how I would interpret them but i wasn't there you guys were um did you ever feel like you were in danger and and uh how do you overcome that to get 
the best shot possible. And either I'm, and if any one of you want to jump ahead. Uh, yeah, yes, no. like, I'm sorry. Much. <laughs> let's let's definitely, uh, yeah. Go yeah ahead, I said definitely yes, where our lives were in danger on an everyday basis covering that conflict. Uh, there were armed individuals all over the streets. You know that was so. Even though the in my case, so I was dealing with the federal police. Even though they were not firing live ammunition, because the because the demonstrators did care were carrying weapons, it, it, it was always a possibility that you know that the, the live the live fire was going to be exchanged. So that you know that's the one thing. So we were wearing bulletproof vests. But also like the improvised you know items that the protesters were using, like for example Molotov cocktails cans of beans that they were throwing because they realized they could hurt the federal agents that way. You know, the the rubber bullets that were flying around coming from the federal side were all hitting people in the eye, like one journalist lost his eyesight with one eye, you know. And so it was definitely an environment in which our lives were, I mean, I, I wish I could sugarcoat it. And, and actually, Julio's situation was even more extreme, he'll share. But yes, our, our lives were in danger in the situation we were aware but we just kind of understand that that's the dynamic of the job. Yeah. And yeah you, uh, for a long time, uh, I kept on saying that, you know, protests in, in the U.S. were, um, you know, a picket sign com uh, convention or, or a picket sign contest because that's all it was, you know, it was mostly peaceful. Uh, but lately they, they've been really, uh, you know, active and, and, and fluid. And, and the one thing that... Uh, you know, in, in response to your question about uh, a specific uh, a riot or a protest, it's like they were all the same. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what side you were on. Uh, they were very violent and, and scary situations uh, within the last 12 months or 13 months, uh, you know, regard regardless of the group, you know, um, didn't matter what side of the aisle you were from, they were uh, all protesting very violently. So. Um, you know, I'd, I'd happen to be right in the middle of it uh, during January 6th uh, insurrection at the Capitol. So that was uh, scary. And, and, and uh, you know, our lives were threatened uh, many times. Uh, but so were they in Minneapolis and in uh, D.C. and, and uh, many other places we were recovering uh, these situations. So uh, the one thing that I do want people to realize is that it didn't matter what protests you were covering. They were all violent. And and so how how did you position yourself to to capture these moments? Because you know, without your images or without camera crews recording it for news networks, we don't know what's happening on the streets. And so, given the danger you were facing, how do you how do you position yourself in a in a in a way where you can capture these these images while staying safe at the same time? Julio? I wish there was. I wish there was a way oh. to uh, stay safe in those situations, Manuel. I mean, I wish there was a, a blueprint that says to you, "Hey, if you do X, Y, Z, you're gonna be all right." You know. Yeah. But there isn't. There is only you're going to decide as a journalist to be in the in the in the in in, in, in between the warring factions, or you're going to decide not to. And that's the other thing I was going to say. We were always given that choice by our managers. Like you do not have to put your life in danger to cover this, you know. There is ways of doing it where you, you know. And we understood that they we had they had our back from that front. But us being so competitive, I know that I am. Julio used, was a high school athlete. I was a high school athlete. So from that, you know, comes from the idea of being so uber competitive. And we just were determined to put ourselves in the position in the in the best position to 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 cover the conflict from from both sides. So that came with a lot of that came with danger. Yeah. Have anything to add, Julio? Yeah. Uh, so again, there's no formula to, to how to do this, but uh, if there's any photo geeks and and you know photo fans out there watching this who who are thinking about the gear, uh, you know, our, the gear that I carry, it's it's a 16 to 35 millimeter lens uh, and also a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So which these two lenses kind of give you the opportunity to cover these events uh, 
at the best uh, way you can uh, do it. So the 16 to 35 means you have to be re right on top of it. So if you feel like uh, you need to get in close, which a lot of us do, it's just because uh, you can't tell pictures uh, or intimate pictures or, or, or uh, you know, real impactful pictures from a, uh, you know, from a distance. So you have to go in. So um, I actually, on my 16 and 35 millimeter lens, I tape the lens at, at 16, the widest aperture which forces me to step, uh, step closer to the people. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there is always uh, uh, residue, like I, I had, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff on me uh, at the end of the day. Um, you know, one thing that, you know, you learn real quick uh, when you get hit with, uh, with pepper spray is how to wash yourself afterwards because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you don't think about this until you're in it. Uh, you got you got to come in and and and, and kind of wash yourself in, in in stages. Whereas like, because uh, Marcio can attest to this, you know, like uh, you know, if you had never done this and you go in and, and you, you you take a shower, uh, pretty much all that um, uh, pepper spray is gonna run down your body and it's gonna hit places where you know uh, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna remind you where you were. So uh, so you learn to 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 deal with things, uh, you know, and and. Uh, the best part about all of this is that there's a network of photographers out on the field that are, you know, they might be your competitors, but they're also your friends. And, uh, and they'll be your friend first in, in the situation. They'll watch out for you. They'll, uh, you know, help you, uh, safety. Uh, and, and really that's, uh, that's really kind of how I operate. I, I look to my friends on, on the field because they're the ones that really are going to step up for me and, and, and protect me at that moment. Hmm. Yeah, thank you, guys. I mean, uh, you're listening to Digging Deep at Ortiz Squared Podcast uh, with former Major League All-Star Russ Ortiz and columnist Jesus Ortiz. Fill in for Jesus is Manny Gomez. And um, follow us on social media, uh, all the platforms, and um, subscribe to the uh, Ara Esquina Podcast Network. And so... Guys, thanks. I mean, your your experiences. I mean, I I think Manny and I both probably have a million questions and want to know, like, you know, more of your experiences. I mean, just hearing you talk, um, you can tell that you know you all um, took some some great risks and and you know from you know during all of your uh, travels and. And doing your job and so again you know thank you for for doing that because those, those tells i think stories for for us uh and, and allows us to know uh like like manny had had talked about you know what what really goes on and that we you know we're, we're able to stay informed and, and get an understanding of of really what's going on out there especially last year when a lot of us most of us were staying at home and and not traveling and you know, only seeing what we see on the news and, and, you know, you guys definitely are able to help us help tell the story uh, of really what's going on. And then we appreciate you sharing your experiences because, you know, it's, it's just not about pointing and clicking, you know, I mean, for, for you guys, I mean, you're actually putting yourselves in, in harm's way. And, and so, um, you know, even though that, you know, you have uh, families and, and, you know, other people to think about. And so, it makes me think of, of, you know, your journeys, you know, the ex your experiences and, and being in harm's way, putting yourselves in harm's way, and then thinking about your experiences of you, you know, coming to the U.S. Um, can you, Julio, share you, you know, your your journey, you know, from from Mexico and and coming here, and then Marcio, you know, love to hear uh, about. Um, your journey as well but Hulo, can you can you just talk talk about that you know uh, again give us an understanding of you know your journey here why you know why you how you got here and and, and all that and um and then we'll go to you marcio yeah so um you know i came here illegally um in 1989 um and, and uh, we tried to actually do it uh in the uh, common way, which is you get a, 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 a travel visa and you come to the U.S. and you just overstay. But uh, we got uh, 
kind of busted at, at the airport at LAX when we landed. And, and so we got dumped into Tijuana after uh, seven days we spent in, in one of these detention centers. So a lot of what you see on the news now and you hear about, uh, you know, being detained, uh, that was uh, my, myself, uh, my siblings, my sister Nancy, my, my brother Carlos and, and my mom. Uh, we were in, in, in a detention center for seven days until it was just rough. Uh, they, my, my mother decided to uh, sign the voluntary deportation because it was, it was so rough. And, and uh, you know, the, the stuff that you hear these days, it's like, yeah, um, I was in there. I, I know exactly what they're talking about. Uh, but, you know, uh, resilient uh, as we are, uh, we got dumped in, in, in Tijuana on, uh, on uh, May 24, 1989. And by May uh, 26, uh, 89, uh, only 27 hours after being dumped in, in, in Mexico, uh, we were back in LA, you know, and, and we crawled to a hole in the fence in San Diego. And, 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 and that was really impactful for me because uh, there, there's a very famous quote uh, as a kid, uh, you know, I'm 10 years old and, and I know we're about to like do something really like, you know, illegal and, but, you know, I'm following my parents' old orders and, and, and you know, I started crying at the border and I'm like, you know, uh, there's a, the quote is, uh, nadie me preguntó si quería venir a los Estados Unidos. Uh, you know, that was, uh, it's a joke at, at, our, at our house now because it's like, uh, you know, look, el que no quería venir a los Estados Unidos, hasta donde anda ahora. So, you know, it's uh, the, the one that didn't want to come to the US, look, look at how far he's gone. Uh, and for me, that was kind of like the, 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 the turning point in my life where I was like, all right, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. Let's, uh, let's go for it. Let's, you know, uh, I got put in this situation and I'm going to make the most of it. So, uh, you know, spent uh, 13 years undocumented uh, waiting to get uh, into the system. Um, but, you know, that didn't stop me. I, you know, I, I, I got side jobs at, at like a tire shop and, 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 call, and calling and doing telemarketing and, and, and working at a, at a McDonald's to pay for my prom and my yearbook and, and you know, my senior uh, dues, uh, all the way up to like uh, um, managing a, a, a Mexican restaurant in, uh, right outside of, a, 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 of Cal State Northridge, uh, Sharky's Mexican Grill. And, and so it's just kind of working my way and, and, and doing the best I could. So. Uh, finally, in, in uh, 20, uh, uh, 2003, uh, I got uh, my residency, and, and at that point, it was like, all right, let's, let's step on the, on the gas because we got to get this career done. That's incredible. Amazing. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Can you share? What about you, Marcio? Can you share your yeah. journey? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah my, my, uh, my journey is slightly different than Julio's, but in the end, the same. Uh, and I wish I could sugarcoat this and put it in a nice light, but there isn't a, there isn't a way, you know. So, uh, you know, I come from a family of means in Honduras, you know. So, uh, you know, my father had some business dealings that went wrong and decided to move his family from Honduras to uh, Los Angeles in the early 80s, you know. But we actually were able to come to the United States with full residency already because of the connections that my father had in business and in family connections that my father had. But uh, what I found, you know, I was excited to to come to, to the United States based on what I saw in the movies and on television. You know, I had that misconception and uh, found out the first day of school. Uh, when I stepped into the classroom and somebody called me a wetback, you know, a classmate mm -hmm. called me a wetback and I didn't even know what it was. Another classmate gave me the, the definition of it. And so, you know, th that's what came to define my experience as an immigrant to this country in the early years. And to the extent up to now, the overt racism that I had to endure, that I felt like I had to endure being a, a new citizen to this country on an almost everyday basis was very difficult to deal with coming from a family that was well positioned in a different country and then being that and having to deal with that for a year on end, day after day, year after year, throughout my whole entire life. But somewhere along the way, I came to the realization that there was also along with the racism came opportunity. 
which is, I think, what makes this country beautiful because you have that and then you have the, a break. Um, I'm tearing up a little bit because it's personal, but yeah, you know, you have that and alongside of it, you have the opportunity. So the opportunity is what I sort of, you know, latched on to and is sort of what led me to this place where I am now, you know, sharing this price with Julio. Yeah, we had similar paths, but here we are and we have succeeded. That's it's incredible. And it, it, incredible. It, your both of your journeys have are so inspiring and, and this is what you guys have been through to get to this point. And now you get to hold up that that Pulitzer Prize. And so I don't want to uh, I'm not concluding this. I just want to ask a question about the Pulitzer Prize. How does it feel to hold that award and, and to to know the, all the work that went into it? And uh, what's next? What's the next award for you guys? Let's start with uh, let's give let's start with Julio. Yeah, so uh, again, we don't really think about awards, right? Uh, you know, they're they're nice to uh, to get and, and to be recognized for for the work. And uh, obviously, you you think, yeah, it would be it would be nice to to do that to to be recognized that way. But um, you know, I I don't I can't feed my family with with awards. You know, I can I can feed them with the daily job. So which is I'm very fortunate to do every day to uh, do something that you know is not even considered work i mean uh, you know uh, it, it's i go to the baseball games and mo most of my uh, average jobs uh, throughout the year is you know cover the uh, baltimore orioles and, and the, the baltimore ravens and then whatever else news happens within the maryland bc area so uh so i'm very fortunate to you know spend a week at the ballpark uh, you know, and, and doing that for fun. So, uh, but really, so like that's that's my goal. My goal is to keep working so that I can uh, continue to have this uh, this opportunity to feed my family. Uh, you know, with this you know honest uh, way of, of of making a living. Hmm. I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty cool because we share this award with ten other photographers. You know. Uh, with the AP and all people, when we saw the list, you know, I mean, those are our brothers, you know, we're brothers. These are our, our best of friends. It's almost like we got together and said, let's do this together. I should, I, I always told Julio, I told you we were going to do something great together, you know, after we got this. <laughs> so, you know, the Pulitzer Prize, you know, had one of my images included and one of Julio's images inclu included, a couple of other um, mates got a couple of pictures in. But you know, I, I the way I see it is a celebration not only one photograph, but it's a celebration of a career. You know, and that's the way I'm looking at it. You know, it's uh, 20 plus years of grinding. You know, just grinding. Like I mentioned er, er, um, earlier, Russ, 20 plus years of like missing stuff. You know, yeah. that you wish you had. You know, and then just come, you know, it's just that one image, just an opportunity to share with the world your joy for the thing. You're doing something that you love on an everyday basis, and that's the way I see it. I have a quick, so a quick follow up for you, Marcio. So, what does it mean for you to be the first Honduran to win the Pulitzer Prize? Um, and how have you been treated in, in Honduras in terms of the media? Like, is it you know, is it big news there, or tell us a little bit about your experience? Yeah, it's actually national news, and it started with my. <laughs> He started with my childhood friend, childhood friend who's a publicist and works with movie stars. You know, and he lives in New York now, and so he started, you know, just basically hitting up all the networks over there. You know, and within a couple of days, I was on every single network. The next day, day after, I was on, you know, the Today Show Honduras version. You know, and like it never stopped. You know, so I keep, I keep sharing with the newspapers. You know, the story of me as a child reading them. You know, like dude, I was reading y'all when I was seven years old, and that in a hammock and the patio of my house. And now here I am. Actually, my story is in, the news, in your newspaper. How cool is that? You know? <laughs> so that's where I am right now, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's gone. It started with the point that, you know, with the, you know, the Honduran society, they're in a bad situation socioeconomically right now, and they're just dying to get some good news, you know. And so this, they're, they're, they're celebrating this because here it's like a Honduran done good, you know. 
and they've latched on to this, to, to this idea of one of their own winning the Pulitzer Prize, you know, so I'm just being very, <laughs> making myself super available to them, you know, and sharing, sharing this, uh, this amazing uh, recognition. That's incredible. Yeah, well, I, I can tell, I can tell you, you know, you two guys are, are very humble guys and, you know, and so appreciative of this, being able to share this award. And I mean, but from someone, you know, just being able to meet you all for the first time, I'm like, this is, this is a big deal. Um, and I know, you know, this is a big deal, but, but just to hear you guys talk about this experience and, you know, really, you're just saying we're doing our job. We're just doing our job, and we happen to to be able to be a part of that. And I think that's awesome uh, to hear because, um, you know, even in sports, and I'm sure you guys, you know, have experienced that. That there's a with social media and and all that stuff. You know, a, there's a lot of self promotion. You know, trying to you know gain more followers, et cetera. Um, but it, I mean, it's it's great to hear that you guys are are just concentrating on on just being passionate about doing your job and doing your job well, and and appreciating the the opportunities and the people around you and, and all that stuff. And so, um, so I'm I would be considered more of an old school, you know, baseball player, you know, that just comes in and and just does their job and tries to do it well and and win games for you know for the team and not worry about any accolades and stuff like that. And so. Um, but you, you gentlemen are, are well deserving of, of the accolades that you've gotten. And, um, but I appreciate your humility and, you know, with all that, then but with that said, um, you know, if you all can, can we ask you to brag on yourselves a little bit, um, and, and, and just talk to us about what, what pictures and, and, you know, this part of your portfolio, what are things that you're really proud of and, and uh, or pictures that you're really proud of and, and that you've been able to share um, that maybe a photo that you you took uh, at a certain point in time, you thought, wow, that was really that's a really good one. I mean, is there do you guys look at your uh, portfolio and because I mean, I have baseball cards, stuff like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. You know, or, um, you know, if I've watched a game of myself or someone brings it to my attention, you know, I mean, did you have kind of dig me moments where you're like, yeah, I, I did a good job on that one. How about you, Julio? We'll go to you first. Well, I'm actually doing that, living that one right, right now, you know, getting to talk to you, uh, Russ, because, um, so, uh, in 20, in 2009, uh, I was part of a nonprofit, uh, when I worked in Houston, uh, we we traveled to uh, to Hungary to to teach baseball to, to kids, and, and you know this little town outside of Hungary. Or, Just let you know, so, I did that as well. Yeah, I went to Hungary and taught baseball as well. Yeah, so that's that's where actually where I'm going. Um, I uh, the the kids were swinging around some some wooden bats. I was like, oh man, you guys you know don't have a lot, but you got wooden bats. It's like let me see, and I, I picked it up. I was like, wait a minute, this is a ma major league bat. This is Russ's Ortiz bat. I was like, that's really cool. Like, like, oh yeah, he came. He gave us all kinds of beer and, and everything. So that that, that little, uh, you know, uh, field of dreams uh, next to that farmland that you were at, I was at yeah. there too. So, so this is really cool that you know we finally, uh, you know, I get to bring it up to you and and, and talk <laughs> that, about it. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. so that's uh, we did that two years, and unfortunately, we we couldn't get the funding to go back, but. Um, but would love to to go back and see those people because now those you know those nine and ten year olds they, you know they're they're twenty two year olds and you know uh, they're in college or graduating college and and they speak like five languages and I'm like dude I try to teach you baseball now can you teach me some 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 other languages <laughs> but uh, you know on top of that like uh, you know uh, to to answer your question about digging me as uh, it, it's it's to me it's always been about uh, you know making full circle moments like this one, uh, you know, uh, I got to meet uh, Jaime Harin, who was a, a big influence in my career, uh, you know, earlier this year as a result, of, or yeah, maybe this year or late last year as a result of, of Minneapolis, uh, uh, you know, some people connected me with Mario Solis, uh, you know, who's a, a, a broadcaster, sportscaster in LA, who was my idol growing up. 
he's the reason, you know, why I wanted to go into journalism, really. And, um, you know, he started following me on Instagram. It's like, so all these little, like, you know, full circle moments, it's really cool. And as far as pictures, I mean, uh, there, there's many that, that I look back and say, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, there's there's one that, you know, took me 13 months to, to put together because I was chasing it and it never worked out. And finally, the full moon rose uh, behind the Empire State Building. And it's wow. like the 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 moon is it's three times bigger than the Empire State Building. So it took some planning and some working to do. And it took me 13 months to, to make that image happen. Uh, besides um, the, the recent picture of, uh, of the upside down flag, uh, which was ran in, in, in uh, as a double truck, a two page uh, spread in, in Rolling Stone magazine, uh, which my neighbor who, who works as a uh, uh, as a framer, she she actually framed it and gifted to me. That's hanging on the wall. But the only other work photo that's hanging on my wall in my house is, is that moon photo because uh, you know it, it was uh, the result of of constant work and and having an idea and then just making it happen. Wow, that patience is incredible for that moon picture. That's. That's incredible. Thirteen months, really? Yeah, because like every month, um, you know, it, we either had snow or rain, or it, you know, or I had actually had to cover a hockey game or whatever. It didn't always <laughs> worked out, and, and and then in order for for that optical illusion where the um, the moon is three times bigger than than the uh, than the building, it have to be far away. So I have, always had to like drive around and look. At locations and 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 plan it so that it, it could work and so that's one of my favorite pictures ever yeah that's awesome what about you marcia what what uh i know you, you probably don't pat yourself on the back very very often but uh what what kind of what kind of pictures your portfolio are you you most proud of well yeah you know interesting enough i think some of the best moments of my career i have shared with julio you know uh and i actually kind of predicted that when I first met Julio and we talked for about, for quite a while, he was a young man uh, coming up as in the business and I was a mid-level professional and we started talking about our backgrounds and I realized, man, this guy and I, we're so similar, you know? And I said to him, you know, someday you and I are gonna be doing cool stuff together, you know? And sure enough, I have covered with Julio two Summer Olympics. I have covered two Super Bowls. Um, you know, and a variety of other, we cover this racial unrest caused by the George Floyd protests simultaneously at the same time in different parts of the country. You know, the, the most important story of the of the day, we were covering it together. Mm. You know, so yeah, so we've done it all. You know, a lot of times we've done it together. Went to Olympics, World Series. Uh, I've actually, I'm, this is actually maybe a great opportunity to, to show that I've actually covered Russ Ortiz <laughs> pitching for the San Francisco Giants. That, <laughs> there he is. I know I've seen that. Before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, so yeah, so I've covered world. I covered World Series in the in the prime position. You know, uh, I mean, uh, I cover Usain Bolt's 100 meter dash win at the London Olympics, and I got the crucial top best moment of the race. Oh, wow. uh, you know. So I've been, you know, at the forefront of some of the most important, uh, uh, you know, moments of U.S. history. I, I was kneeling down when Callum Kaepernick, the first time he knelt down, I was kneeling down literally in front of him making that photograph. And I got so much trouble with the team over that because, you know, they really thought that I was painting them in a negative light. And uh, but, you know, it all I think it all comes full circle the last year when I actually the coverage of the of the Black Lives Lives movement. You know how people took to the streets in, streets in the middle of a pandemic and not just black people by the way I, right. keep, I keep telling people green people purple people i mean you know i realized super early on in this thing that this transcended race you know and i really at that point felt that i was at the forefront of history so then at the end of all of this now that i'm talking about this i'm trying to put 10 images together and i'm just so happy and proud of that coverage that it, i'm having a hard time you know narrowing it down because i'm so proud of that coverage yeah that's incredible mandy you got it you got a question i was trying to find the images so that i can share them with people oh. um but i mean hold on let me get my questions back up 
Sorry. Sorry, I think I lost it. Um, so for what's popping to my mind now is Julio. I, I, I cover a lot of Baltimore Orioles games, and I think I've seen you in the press box. Um, and and at the time, I'm I'm not clicking. And then when you said it, I was like, yes, that's him. That's he's the one that's sitting in the press box. I'm like, we're like one of two Latinos in that in that press box. But um, how how does it feel to go like to, for both of you? This is a question for both of you to to continue. I know that you guys don't do it for the awards. Um, this is a passion for you guys. Um, it's something that that you said it helps you to feed your families. How do you, after winning a Pulitzer Prize, which not many people have done, um, it's it's an, an amazing accomplishment. Um, when you go back to work, are you thinking like, do, do they know that I'm a Pulitzer Prize winner? Like, <laughs> or or is it just like ah, just another day? You know what I mean? Kind of a weird I'm question. I'm telling people. I'm telling people, Manuel. <laughs> I actually, I actually had to cover. Do you Larry wear it? El no, I'm telling people. I actually <laughs> had to cover Larry Elder yesterday, who is a conservative talk show host that uh, is running for mayor, the uh, running for governor of California because they're trying to recall the governor. Recall, and yeah. We were talking, and one of the, and one of the first things that I said to him, but oh, by the way, I just won a Pulitzer surprise, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I'm just very super proud, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sharing it with. You know anybody that I can share it with. I wish I could just keep my mouth shut, but it's just too <laughs> momentous. You know? It's just too momentous. What else can I say? How about you, Julio? Um, you know, it's uh, it's funny because I, I I'm, I'm really jealous of uh, of Marcio's T-shirt. He uh, he had a little party after uh, after the Pulitzer, and somebody gave him a shirt that says, uh, you know, ask me about my Pulitzer. So you know that's. That's the best advertisement that you know you can walk around with, but uh, you know uh, it's it's fun to think about. It's fun to you know say. It. Uh, actually, Marcio convinced me that I should put it on my Instagram and my Twitter, uh, you know, bio because I, I wouldn't do it, uh, you know. And and uh, uh, a couple of my close friends, uh, you know, uh, that we go to spring training every year and, and watch baseball for you know for fun and. Um, and we'll probably enter the stadium and watch innings of baseball, but you know it's mostly about like hanging out and seeing each other because we're we're spread out across the country. Uh, we call ourselves the Gold Buc Buccaneers, and and they were like, uh, you know, like the minute Julio wins this, he's gonna like you know put it as as his profile, everything, and then once it happened, I'm like. <laughs> Oh no, it's like so weird. I don't want to do it. And then Marcio convinced me. He's like, dude, you gotta do it. You gotta do me this favor. Uh, you know, you have to do it. And, and um a lot of times, you know, I, I, I try to downplay it, uh, but people are like, No, you can't. Uh, you know, it's 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 crazy because uh, you know, you just wanna shout it to everybody, but um but I don't know, it's it's just it's just really uh interesting, really weird. Uh, I somebody was saying that uh, Marcio should throw out the first pitch at Dodger Stadium, and I was like, "Oh, you know that would be fun. I, I'm all down for that." But then, you know, the, the amount of like, you know, FOMO and, and and jealousy would be like, "Oh, come on, man, let me throw it out too." So uh, I don't know. Uh, that again, it's 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 fun to uh, to celebrate it. Uh, you know, it's been a month since since it happened, and uh, and I'm still you know, in shock, uh, because it just, uh, I, I never thought it would happen. Um, but, but it, it did. And, you know, and I think people know, and, and people kind of like, all right, it's been a month, like, you know, we moved on, but like, is it, within me, like, I'm still having a party inside of me. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to add a couple of things on this uh, topic, guys. Uh, uh, you know, um, that uh, the Pulitzer Prize, what's unique, the two things that make it unique and for me makes it celebrate more is A, we have nothing to do with it. That's entered by a company. You know, they don't even, we have no say. And, you know, so that our work was selected by some higher ups and we had absolutely nothing to do with it. And on top of that, the Pulitzer board not only, is not only looking at content, they're, they're looking at what societal impact did this coverage have? And they, they, you have to be able to present an argument to them to say, that this coverage actually changed something in, in, in the world, you know, like 
what you know how do you present you have to present that to them and they have to be convinced that that's the case and i think because of those two things i i, I just find it way more special that's amazing. yeah yeah and I, I will say guys if if you uh try try not to wish to throw out the first pitch if you're not confident that you can actually uh, <laughs> throw it straight because uh you don't want to become a meme or anything like that <laughs> Would you, if, if you ever had the opportunity, would you go from the mound or would you go from the front of the mound? You know, I, I was a catcher, so I I, I want to do it backwards. I I want to be on my knees behind home plate and throw it to the yeah. to the pitcher. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe Julio, you can receive it from Marcio. Maybe Marcio could throw it to Julio. There you That'd go. Be awesome. There you go. Let's yeah. make it work. I get I I I get tips from my nephew guys down the street at Saugus High School. You guys know Saugus High School. Uh, yeah. He is. Uh, as a freshman, incoming freshman, pitched for the varsity team two days ago. So he's going to be able to teach me and uh, get me prepared for that moment if that opportunity ever came up. What, so where do you guys keep your Pulitzer Prize? you guys have them? Can, can we see them? Is that something that, that's normal to ask? Or <laughs> is the question uh, has, we, we haven't received it yet. So my understanding oh. is sometime in the fall, Sometime in the fall, there's going to be a presentation. In my, from my understanding, it could be wrong, but there's going to be a presentation at Columbia University where the judging takes place, where we'll be presented a uh, in the award. Uh, so then, yes, we'll definitely be proudly, proudly showing it then after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wear, wear it around your neck like Flavor Flav. <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so I, I guess we, we could start wrapping up a little bit. Last question for me is what advice do you give to to any to to Marcio, young Marcio and to young Julio um, coming up in the world, looking to chase their dreams? What advice are you giving yourselves uh, as children now as you know, to your child self? <laughs> I hope that makes <laughs> sense. Let's start with uh, let's start with Marcio. Uh, for a uh, young Marcio, the immigrant coming to this country, I would say, be patient. Things are going to get better and you're going to succeed, you know, and also, uh, just stay the course and work hard and, uh, believe in yourself and the sky is the limit, my friend. Nice. Julio, how about you? So, uh, for me, it's, it's, you know, calm down a little bit, uh, cause I, I, you know, I get my, my cage rattled really fast. Uh, and, and, uh, one of the things that, uh, I, I often remember is, uh, when I was trying to make the transition from being a, a writer to photographer, I was, uh, working part-time at the LA daily news sports department, writing, you know, five graphs, uh, from a high school soccer game or whatnot. And one of the staff photographers, you know, noticed that I was uh, submitting photos for my game. Uh, and, and I was submitting them because we didn't have a photographer there. And I was just trying to help out, and, you know, and I was doing photos just you know, for fun at that moment. Um, and one of the things he said was, uh, you know, you stick to the writing. Uh, we'll take care of the photos. And, and it rattled my cage so hard that, like, you know, it's like it made me uh angry uh, you know to hear somebody you know who i was looking forward to you know to guidance and and to support to kind of shut me down so quick you know to kind of you know uh this allowed me the chance to to learn from this person and, and so uh I, I was very angry but then uh what happened afterwards is uh, i started uh getting internships and and doing the conventions and, and meeting people like marcio marcio was my uh, advisor uh, when I was at the uh, El Reportero Latino for the NHJ uh, student project. And, and then, uh, you know, at these conventions, I met uh, people like Steve Gonzalez, who, who, you know, I call him my my padrino, my, my godfather of my career, because he really uh, uh, opened some doors for me, gave me some chances that nobody else was giving me. And, and so, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to... Uh, uh, listen to the, the right people, I guess. I was listening more to the anger. And, and so uh, I would go back and say, look, just focus on people that really are looking out for you and, and, and listen to them because they're the ones that are really going to you know, push you forward. And, and uh, you know, one of the coolest things was uh, the day we 
we won the, the award. It, it was also Steve Gonzalez's uh, birthday. And uh, Marcio and I, you know, we're, we're both uh, Gonzalez kids. You know, he, he gave us both our, our, our first big job uh, at, at different newspapers. And so it was really cool to give that to him as, as an award, as a, as a gift for his birthday. That's awesome. Marcio, do you have anything to add about, about uh, Steve Gonzalez or? Well, you know, uh, like I said, there's uh, there's there are various points and people in my life that that without them, I don't I don't have this this uh, recognition. And at the top of the list is, is Steve Gonzalez. You know, Steve Gonzalez went to the, as an intern at the Kansas City Star, where they never hired hired interns before. They're like the, the director of photography. there made it very clear to me: you're here for three months. We don't do interns here. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so then at the end of the internship, there was a job opening. Steve Gonzalez marched into the director's photographer's office and say, I'm going to be an editor. I'm surrendering my equipment to not to anyone other than Marcio. He said that to his director of photography. Wow. So he made that stance for me in, at that moment of my career. And then he became my biggest advocate, you know, when I was uh, working for him for many years and my biggest cheerleader and uh, has always been. So he's like about... Other than, other than, my, than, my, than, my, than my mom and my, my siblings, he's the next person I call to celebrate this with. Like, I mean, that's I don't know what else to say other than that. Yeah. You know, so. that's, awesome. yeah, that's, that's great that you guys share the mentor and, and Steve Gonzalez. And and I know you guys are mentoring others. You're you're inspiring others. Um, you know, I, I know that you, you know, inspired anybody that's watching today and uh, you inspired me, so I, I appreciate you you coming on. Um, this has been an incredible hour, um, and I know we could talk, all, you know, more and more and more, and and, and we'd love to. Um, but I think uh, one of the things, real quick, um, you know, if if you all could just really quick, just maybe just uh, you know, based off of. Uh, your experience. I know you kind of share a little bit, but um, and I and and I know this maybe where Manny was going. Just you know, how would you? What what kind of advice? This is what we we like to end our show with. Uh, just some quick advice and and what you would give to to me, to Manny, to uh, you know Jesus or or anybody that's that's watching on. You know, really one of the things. I love to, to talk about is just the passion. So you, you know, what you guys are passionate about, but um, anything based off of your experiences, you know, uh, life experiences, like what's some, some other quick advice that you would give to, to people? When you, when you, when you decide what, what the rest of your life is going to be, this is something that maybe you and I, Russ, will share because uh, I remember seeing you on the mound and seeing, you know, what show you got out of that. But I think when you find something, when you find what's going to define your life, make sure that's something that you love. Because if you kind of sort of like it, you ain't going to get there. You know, you sort of have to say, hey, this is what I, this is it, man. This is it, you know. And then that's, how, that's where success comes from, from the fact that you're doing what you love every day and it doesn't feel like a job. You know, and it doesn't matter what it is and how much money you make. It's just that's right. really where happiness is. That's my best advice. I love that. Love it. What about you, Julio? Um, for me, is uh, you know, don't uh, don't be afraid of, of uh, failing because you are going to continue to fail uh, if you focus on failing. You know, but but if you focus on 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 you know not being afraid of that and just doing things uh you know tackling things by the horns and, and, and going after it really helps i mean you know uh there was a lot of uh moments in my career where i you know i had to walk into a, a, an editor's office and be like you know i messed up today i didn't you know i didn't think about the situation and i missed a shot or you know uh you know, there was one time where you know I sent my camera to the repair and it came back it, and then the repair shop uh, reset it everything and so I have my camera set so that it uh, it doesn't take pictures if it doesn't have a card but when, since it was reset I got my gear and, and then I went chasing a, a, a police chase and I thought I was taking all these great pictures but there was no card in there you know oh, wow. uh, you, you learn things you know uh, on the go you know and, and 
all right, you know, you fell that time, but then, you know, it, it makes you, it prepares you for, for something better, uh, you know, and, and winning this award doesn't mean that I've, you know, stopped failing. I mean, uh, not too long ago, the Dodgers were at the White House and, uh, you know, and, and I got to photograph, the, you know, the team, uh, you know, I'm a huge Dodger fan. So for me, it was like, you know, a, a, a key assignment to be going to the White House with the Dodgers and, and, and I screwed up. Uh, you know, in, in the button that I use to uh, send my photos to the editor is also the button that changes my uh, white balance. And, 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 and while trying to work too fast and trying to do too much at once, I, I changed my white balance to like something really horrible. It, and it took us uh, quite a bit of time to fix those, to make those images look presentable, uh, you know, because we have, uh, you know, every major outlet looking for our images and so right. uh it was very very disappointing it, it actually like you know put me down on, on you know in my place it, it knocked me off that uh pulitzer you know uh pedestal and, and put me down at the, you know at the bottom of the staircase again and like all right you you, you gotta you gotta you still gotta you know learn you you're still not you know perfect so uh so that's my 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 advice you know just uh don't get too distracted by the failures to, you know, just learn from them. Okay. Yeah, that's great advice. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much guys. And, and, uh, follow Marcio at Marcio Sanchez 06 on Twitter. Follow, uh, Julio at Julio Cortez underscore AP also on Twitter to follow their work. Where else could, uh, could we find some of your work guys? We're, we're very active on Instagram, Marcio J Sanchez. Okay. And Julio, anywhere else we could find some more of your work? Yeah, I'm all all of my work is on on Instagram. I I rarely tweet, so um, uh, my Instagram is July the Photo Guy. Okay, July the Photo Guy. So this was a digging deep production. A uh, member of the Arasquina Podcast Network, I'm Manny Gomez, Russ, Julio, Marcio. Thank you so much for uh, for coming on. Really enjoyed talking to you guys. Thanks for having uh, us. Thank you. Yeah, Bye, thank everyone. you guys. A real honor, Russ.